Hi everyone, my name is Larissa. I'm currently reading for a DPhil in genetics here at Keeble College. And when I'm not running experiments in the lab, I sing in the altitude section of Keeble College Choir. Um, today I want to talk to you about plane chant, about the tour the choir did last year to Sweden, and to a choral piece that is very, very dear to me, and indeed close to the hearts of many here in the choir and that is the Requiem, written by the French composer Maurice Duruflet. So, here at Kivo, because of the Anglo-Catholic heritage, our main service is neither the Evensong nor Compline. It is, before formal call on Sunday, the Eucharist. What that means for the choral life of the chapel is that we sing Mass every Sunday of term. And when we don't have time to cover an elaborate polyphonic mass settings, we often use one of the simple or simple uh, Gregorian chant from, taken from the Curiale. Now, I was not very familiar with plain chant before singing at Kippo. And yet plain chant is a cornerstone of Western sacred song. It's been used by the Roman Catholic Church since the 9th century. And many of its unaccompanied melodic lines have impregnated composers' minds throughout the history of classical music. For example, you can find sentences like the themes of the Dies Irae in anything from Paganini's 24 Capricci for solo violin to Mahler's Second Symphony, The Resurrection. Now, the reason I'm bringing Plainchant today um, is that Maurice Dunflet was a boy chorister in the Rouen Cathedral in France. And that's a cathedral um, where the plain song tradition was still very, very strong when he sung there from 1912 to 1918. And that had a really, really strong influence on him as both an organist and a composer. In 1941, he was asked, he was commissioned to compose a requiem by the, um, by the government of the time. Um, he finished it in 1947 and um, he worked on it for six years. He was very, very particular about uh, what he wrote. He wrote relatively little for the lapse of his career, and um, he, he reworked his work extensively. Um, and so in those six years that he spent time composing that requiem, um, all the melodic themes are basically plain chant themes, um, and they are supported by a very French sounding uh, harmony, which has colors that range from something that sounds a lot like Debussy's music or Ferré's music, but it's very, very particular because of the model colors that's given by the Plainchamp themes. Um, and if you will indulge me in talking a bit to you more specifically about it, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite movements, and that's the Offertory. Um, the Offertory is a setting of the Domine Jesu Christi text. It's a movement that's as full of contrast as the text is. Um, the organ starts itself for quite a long time, and once the mood is set and once the Domine Jesu Christi sentence a theme appears in the organ, um, the altos open up the choral section and they're alone. And the words are very touching, very moving. They say, Lord Jesus Christ, King of glory, deliver the souls of all the faithful departed from the punishments of hell and from the deep lake. And after that, there is a section when the sops and the tenors and the basses enter, and it all progressively evolves in something very dissonant um, that leads to a very agitated animato section. And then the whole choir sings again, fortissimo in unison. And for us altos, that say, takes us quite high in the vocal range, and it gives an incredible intensity um, to one's singing of it, and you feel stretched to the edges of your conviction. It's an incredible thing to sing. There is another repetition of the Libera Eas de Ore Leones, uh, deliver, deliver them from the mouth of the lion, lest Tartarus swallows them up, lest they fall into darkness. And that has the sound accompaniment uh, of the organ, and the organ has just all those registrations taken up in itself, like a big fanfare from heaven. And um, it goes on to a next iteration of the same heart-wrenching words, and the organ goes completely bonkers at this time, and um, it's, it's a very mad moment of singing, of being singing those words. Um, at some point, the harmonic fabric feels like it's completely falling down, it's completely breaking down, and it's impossible to sing this piece without feeling it in your bones.
And I said it's a piece full of contrast, and it is, because at that point, when you feel you've like exhausted the possibilities of music and sound, um, the music's done again, and it, we're back to the gentle modal theme of the Domine Jesu. It's presented just before the third section of the offertory, when the sops enter on the sit signifer section, which is a long prayer for the intercession of the Archangel Michael, that he would lead the souls of the deceased to eternal light. And we are miles away from the fanfare colors that we had just a few moments ago. We are now to the sounds of flutes and the sounds of strings. And we altars re enter then. And the text is then a prayer. Um, and that prayer is that God would remember the peace that he promised to Abraham, the Old Testament patriarch, um, that he would not forget that. And um, it, it's quite interesting in this court at that point, Jerofli asks for a voix celeste, which means in French a celestial voice, to be used by the organ. Um, and I've always been very touched um, by, by that pointing in the registration, especially because a couple of bars after, he asks for a voix humaine, a human voice, uh, which is another name. I just find it very poetic. Anyway, the offertory um, goes on the, that particular section is sung by altos alone, and it's just very moving to see how altos opened the offertory, and that end of the first section of the offertory is sung by altos alone as well. Um, and perhaps my entire favorite moment in the entire Requiem is the moment when you have um, a very short sentence played on the manual by the organ um, that's wonderful and mysterious and dark and luminous at the same time. It's completely otherworldly, and it just, it's just before the baritone solo starts. Um, and I still have goosebumps when I think back on the two times we thought we, I sang the Dirofle Requiem with the choir here. That was last summer. Um, we went on a tour to Sweden. We sang both in Uppsala Cathedral and in Westeros Cathedral. Um, Matthew Martin, our former choir director, played the organ, and Edward Higginbottom, directed, and there are just no words to describe the sounds of um, the voice of Rob, uh, who was the baritone who sang that solo. Um, the emotion that came with it, um, the fact that you hear someone you know express something so deep, so personal, and you hear it echoing in a place of worship that's gorgeous and big and has a history that's foreign to yours, but to which you still can relate. Um, when you hear the interplay between a human voice and the organ, there's just no words to describe the emotions and the intensity of re-entering with your fellow altos to close the Quamoling Abrahe that Durufle says as the real closing of the offertory. And I do cherish those memories as one of the, my most precious of my time here in Oxford. I cherish the incredible experience of bonding with the other people in the choir I cherish the care, the attention, the obsession sometimes that goes in making something so beautiful um, and so precious with people that are just absolutely amazing and that I open up um, things in you that you didn't know you had. Um, and with all that said, let's just going back to plain chant, um, I'm very glad, I'm very gra grateful to Kibble Choir um, because I'm now myself also rooted in plain song um, and it feel, I feel it's given me a new level of appreciation for choral masterpieces such as the Durufle Requiem. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope it has given you a glimpse into both the ordinary and the extraordinary moments of the life um, of the choir and of the chapel. If you are a prospective student, be it undergrad or postgrad, um, and if you are interested in singing with us, uh, do get in touch with Pippa, the music administrator, or with Paul, um, who is our new director of music. Um, stay safe, stay musical, uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, and let's go onwards and upwards. Bye.